I am Meta Parlakar. I am the Chief Technology Officer and one of the co-founders of Casper Labs. Casper Labs is a professional software services company, and we are focused on building for the enterprise. Namely, the first thing that we built was the technology that bootstraps and underpins the public Casper network. We spent about two and a half years building the blockchain, starting with the virtual machine and a deep understanding of what it takes to build for the enterprise. And now we're focused on getting solutions on top of that blockchain live and deployed. So my background before I fell into the blockchain rabbit hole was I worked in enterprise SaaS software. I worked in enterprise SaaS software for about 25 years. I was an engineering and technology leader in large companies like Adobe and Avalara, and I was responsible for their cloud software, the cloud, Web2, whatever you want to call it. These were B2B large-scale deployments. Um, I remember doing releases at Adobe, uh, Omniture, before it was acquired by Adobe, where we had to roll out software to 35,000 servers. 35,000 servers, and that was one data center. Um, that was the scale at which we had to deliver on time, on quality, and on feature releases. And so when you think about the kind of scale that sits behind Salesforce, that sits behind Amazon, that sits behind these very large enterprise deployments, there are things that blockchain needs to do in order to be part of that stack. So we're going to talk about what it means to onboard the next million users onto blockchain. So when we think about blockchain technology, right, it's clear that the enterprise is going to lead the way. It's $4 billion industry today, and that is expected to rise to $60 billion by 2028. And Deloitte recently did a survey and they found that 93% of CTOs and CIOs are looking at blockchain technology. And of those 93%, 75% believe if they fail to adopt it, they're going to lose competitive advantage in the marketplace. And in 2021, they continue to invest in this technology despite a bad economic environment and despite inflation. So they are really, really focusing on this technology, right? And so... It's definitely something that we knew about early on. We founded Casper Labs in 2018, and we saw the writing on the wall that just like cloud, just like the internet, enterprises are going to lead the way for adoption. And so we knew we needed to service the enterprise, first and foremost. So it's clearly important they're investing in blockchain technology. We can see the investment. We hear about a lot of enterprise blockchains, why aren't we seeing more traction? Why aren't we seeing more broadly adopted use cases for blockchain? Well, my belief is it all comes down to this triangle, this trilemma. The only difference is from my perspective is I don't look at scalability as TPS. Because I feel like if you're going to secure something of very high value and you want to trust it, you don't want to sacrifice security and decentralization for it. But scalability needs to be looked at in a different frame. It needs to be looked at scaling the adoption of blockchain within the enterprise itself. For example, anytime software is released, it's highly governed. So what does my chief security officer think about working with the blockchain? What does my head of development operations and site reliability engineering think about working with the blockchain? Can they work with this blockchain? Does it meet their requirements? How many developers can build on this blockchain? Does it fit with my existing tooling? These are all really important factors that I think have been completely overlooked by the other public layer ones because they didn't start off building for the enterprise and they didn't understand what it takes to deliver software at scale. So what is the road to enterprise adoption? What does that look like? Well, I think it starts with some core capabilities in the blockchain protocol itself. It has to support features that will support SOX 2 compliance, ISO, as an example. And you need that system along with your other systems to not only support it, but if you're going to be trusting what's going on it, you need it to enforce it. And then it needs to interoperate with your existing cloud providers. It needs to interoperate with your existing development operations tooling. 
And then on top of that robust infrastructure, you need real world use cases like IPW, who is tokenizing patents using the public Casper protocol, which is going to revolutionize R&D departments and all of the Fortune 1000. Because think about it, R&D today is a loss center. It's not a profit center. But if you can get valuations for your intellectual property, you can turn that R&D center into a profit center, which means that enterprises will continue to invest in R&D, which means more innovation for us as a society. And so we see this real transformative uh, opportunities with blockchain, which is why I'm so excited to be here. So all software is governed, right? I talked about Omniture releasing software to 35,000 servers. It goes through rigorous testing. It goes through sign-off. It goes through testing in a pre-production environment. It goes to beta. All of these processes exist in the enterprise, and enterprises need to respond to regulatory changes. They need to respond to customer requirements, and they need to be able to respond to market forces, right? And they have to be able to pivot and adapt and make changes, and your smart contracts are no exception. And so I found it as a non-starter for me when I heard that contracts are supposed to be tightly immutable. That made no sense to me. I would never, ever deploy a piece of code that I couldn't update immediately upon getting the first customer request or the first bug report. And so this is table stakes, right? And being able to rapidly iterate through this process is also massively important in order to be able to integrate this into existing tech stacks. So we've talked about control. Enterprises need control over their software. The next thing we're going to talk about is flexibility. So depending on what an enterprise needs, they're used to configuring software to meet their needs. They're not used to forking software or copying software and then making the changes that they need and deploying it. They want to take something off the shelf and they want to configure it to meet their needs. And so the underlying protocol is highly configurable. You can deploy a new configuration file and you can change how your system is going to work, your protocol is going to work. You can also do this with smart contracts. Our recently released CEP78, which is our NFT standard, supports over half a dozen modalities. So with one piece of audited code, you can create NFTs that can be used for KYC that are non-transferable. You can create NFTs to support the OpenSea use case. You can create NFTs that have mutable metadata, which is being used by Metacask, where they're tracking the health of whiskey casks over time. You can create a wide variety of types of NFT contracts from a single piece of code. And that's very, very powerful for the enterprise because they can just take the software right off the shelf and they can get productive immediately. And they can have the assurance and guarantee that that code has been audited and they don't have to worry about making changes that could be incompatible. So when Casper Labs releases an upgrade to the CEP standard, they can deploy that upgrade and get the benefits of the new features. And the same thing goes for the base protocol. If I configure my Casper protocol differently, I can still get the benefits of the next generation releases that are coming out because it's all been tested with all those configurations. So they get the benefit of ongoing support and the latest and greatest features from Casper. And if you think about how the enterprise functions with vendors and functions with service providers and uses software, this is what they expect. So we're trying to build a system and an ecosystem that actually functions exactly the same way as enterprises always functioned, right? We don't have any expectations that they're going to rip out their existing infrastructure just to make room for blockchain. And this is the feedback we've heard from a lot of enterprises we've spoken to, is it's got to work with what I've already built. I've spent 20 years building this. I'm not going to toss it out. It's got to work with it. So we're like, okay, so you've told us all about this. Like, who's actually using your stuff? Well, the first one we talked about was intellectual property management. That's IPW. They're actually up for an award here at Paris Blockchain Week as the largest public enterprise blockchain deployment. 
They're going to be minting 25 million NFT patents on Casper, and then they're going to provide um, an AI and their system to do valuation of your intellectual property, as well as expert opinions and a marketplace where they can buy, sell, and trade patents with other corporations. So we're very excited about them. They're a great partner for us, and we hope that they win. We're gonna, that's going to be announced tomorrow. For retail, we're doing really interesting things with brand and customer loyalty and engagement. So if you think in the retail space, if you're using a distributor to distribute, say, cosmetics, you have no connection with your end customer. There's no way, right? So for anybody who buys even an appliance, you get that you know, consumer registration card, right? Well, imagine if you just scan a QR code, you get an NFT, and now that manufacturer has built a one-on-one -on -one relationship with you. And that's really important to them to build communities, to build brand engagement, to target upsells. So they love this capability and using this kind of loyalty and rewards program. With supply chain, we're tracking the efficacy of pharmaceuticals in tightly controlled, temperature controlled containers. And what's unique about this use case is that the NFTs and the mutable metadata are bundled as one, right? So you can track anything on a blockchain. That in of itself isn't, in isn't that interesting you know, today. But what is interesting is if I have a specific crate inside which there's some goods, that crate is an NFT and the temperature sensor is logging the humidity, the light, and the temperature of that individual crate. And you can see block over block over block over block every time that sensor has registered something, and it goes with the NFT, right? So I don't have to have a certificate that's disconnected from the NFT. It's part and parcel of the NFT. And that's really important because what happens today is certification, inspection, and testing, they get separated from the good. That's what's hard. When it's in the NFT and it's all bundled, it conveys together. That's very, very valuable for, for customers. In financial services, we have a really interesting joint venture called Nucleus Finance, and we're revolutionizing finance with algorithmic smart financial contracts, whereby if you think a mortgage is just a formula, you can represent that on a smart contract, put it on the blockchain, and then you can couple that with an integration, piece of integration software that integrates into your financial infrastructure, and then an analytics system. And so now you can get real-time visibility into your cash flows on your balance sheet. And I don't know about any of you, but I would really wish that the banks had that like six months ago, right? Um, so they would have been able to at least forecast what, what the Fed was going to do, what, a, what kind of impact it would have had to them. And being able to do this kind of forward-looking analysis with real-time data is hugely interesting to these banks, right? Because they can be more creative, more creative but safe with their liquidity, right? But by the same token, it's all backed in data, and they just don't have that capability today. Media and entertainment, we're doing really interesting things with NFTs with royalties, um, where you can drop an NFT into a royalty contract. Now that NFT is governed by that royalty contract, so as it's bought, sold, leased, traded, the royalties flow through that contract. That's something that a lot of digital artists are really looking forward to. We're also going to be adding licensing, so there'll be licensing terms that will govern that NFT contract. Again, all from feedback we're hearing from the enterprise. And then lastly, government, right? Government has a lot of really interesting use cases primarily around ESG compliance and carbon credits, and really helping them uplift their government infrastructure. There's a lot of public data that can really benefit from the blockchain. So I am really excited about all the things that are coming up for us. I'm very excited to be part of this transformational period, and I'm looking forward to seeing what the future holds. So.